boy season four just climaxed and so did I holy shit. I have a lot to say about the season but overall the thing I noticed it was that this season was uh, incredible um, sorry I can't swear in the first 30 seconds of YouTube video can I? it's very rare a show can just keep getting better like this show does but before I talk about the good I would like to address some of the issues I did have with this season Fab Five Freddy told me everybody's fly DJ spinning, I said my my Flash is fast, Flash is cool Francois Sapa, Flash ain't no dude I know this show has always been tongue in cheek and likes to parody more modern societal topics and issues but this season kept making references to modern societal and political issues it just lost the humour side of things the season was so unnecessarily politically charged just for no reason like I said in my last video, I don't really care what side of the political spectrum you're on or what you identify with. Just don't shove it down my throat when I'm just trying to watch some entertainment and you know enjoy myself. In past seasons, the boys had always tried to toe the line by making fun of both political sides. Hence why I praised it in my previous video on the boys uh, and in my previous video that I posted. But this season, they've really thrown nuance to the wind and they just doubled down on being ultra left and woke for no real reason. Like, did this show about evil superheroes really need a whole plot line about abortion? It doesn't even have any relevance to the story, it was just thrown in there to stir up some controversy. The show doesn't need more controversy, you have like a decapitation every episode. And in this season alone we've had a BDSM sex dungeon party, a human centipede of clones eating each other's asses. Like, there's no need to go from that to, oh boy, but guys, abortion is like totally radical dudes. There's other segments about Antifa, religion and BLM that are just unnecessary and also wildly factually incorrect. But luckily the story and the characters are so good, the political bias in the show doesn't really bother me. I mean it's not, it's definitely there but it's, 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 you can disregard it because of how good the rest of the things in the show are. And besides that there aren't really any other issues that I've had with the show uh, other than, you know, maybe some acting performances that weren't as good as I would have expected but, um, we'll get to that. Fab Five Freddy told me everybody's fly. DJ spinning, I said my my. Flash is fast, Flash is cool. Francois Sapa, Flash ain't no dude. Terrific. Okay, okay. Let's address the elephant in the room. First of all, Homelander is the best thing about the show, and the main reason for that, or one of the big reasons for that, is Anthony Starr. This man as Homelander is putting in a generational performance. I know there's other good TV actors out there, but. This man just gives me, just give this man his Emmy already. Like now no one is beating this. I, I refuse to believe anyone this year is going to come close to his performance. This is probably the best villain I've seen in TV since Gus Fring, and probably the best performance of a super villain since Heath Ledger's Joker. We're talking that level. Every scene Homelander is in now is so unsettling, because you really can't tell whether he's just gonna snap and kill everyone, or just start crying and running away, you know? I literally have no notes negative about Homelander. He is both perfectly written and performed in every way. He is simultaneously the strongest character in the show and the weakest character in the show. He's physically imposing and extremely intimidating with his physical power, yet he is still so mentally weak, insecure and unintelligent that you somehow expect him to always make the wrong decision whenever it matters most. And then he always ends up getting bailed out time and time again, either by smarter characters like Sage or Newman. Speaking of who. Yeah, have you ever seen war games? What am I saying? Look at you. Of course you've seen fucking war games. Newman's transition from hero to villain was completed by season three, and now she's almost like an anti-hero. You know, she's like on her, her own sort of side. Yeah, she's still a villain. Uh, it's confusing. She's a very complex character, which I really like. You can tell that she's reluctant to work with Homelander, and that deep down she hates him and does want to get rid of him. Uh, yet she's still complicit in his work because she also wants to protect herself and her daughter. She clearly has a plan, but it's interesting to see where her character can go next. Also, her relationships with da her daughter, Samir and Stan Edgar are very interesting. I would love to see uh, where will they build up to, because I know Stan Edgar is definitely going to have another role to play in the upcoming season, as well as, his as well as her daughter. I'll let you ass fuck me while we watch the Kim and Ray J video. She was a really great addition to the show. Uh, she really helps to reveal how insecure and ill-equipped Ill mentally Homelander is for being an authoritative figure that he clearly wants to be. In many ways, she is the true villain of this season. You know, without her, many of the terrible things in the show that end up happening wouldn't have taken place. Uh, and if Sage is still helping Homelander in the next season, the world is in big, big trouble. I'm your daddy. 
my boy Stan, he didn't really have much to do this season. But you can tell he's going to be an important character with the way he was, you know, released by Newman and then never seen again. So you know he's going to come back in to be a thorn in the side of Homelander in some capacity. And I'll tickle your balls till your big meter stop. And even then I won't. I just won't do it. Now, Billy Boy had a very interesting and emotionally charged season. He's been fired as the leader of the boys, riddled with cancer, and is seemingly f fighting two different parts of his own psyche, Joe Kessler and Becca, who are both acting as the devil and angel on his shoulders, respectively. You know, he still clearly has some good left in his soul. He clearly wants to save Ryan and didn't want to hurt Starlo or Kamiko. Uh, he's constantly fighting his urges to destroy all soup life throughout most of the show, and this urge manifests itself as Joe Kessler. Then in the finale, obviously, we see him finally snap and take matters into his own hands, and that's probably where Kessler really takes over. <laughs> Star didn't really have a lot to do this season. Jim was almost the main character for the first season, really. But as the show has gone on, she's really taken a back seat. You know, she's more of a, a tool used for exposition and to move the story along, you know, be like an emotional aspect. You know, she's just too good and tries to be too pure all the time and it's it's kind of boring. She's not really very complex. She's just sort of like the antithesis of all the villains in the show and that's sort of all she really does. But she did have some uh, very good fight scenes with Firecracker, Deep and the Shapeshifter. Uh, it's just a shame I think Erin Moriarty's performance wasn't great in this season. I don't think her, season, her performances have been particularly great in any of the seasons, but I think particularly this season, I know she's getting a lot of hate for other things, but I think... Particularly the season where she's talking to herself as a shapeshifter, where I think she could have had, she could have definitely done a better performance. <gasps> Titties. My new motto for mental health: real eyes, realize, realize. I thought, much like another character we're going to look at, the Deep was going to have a great redemption arc. You know, where he does some good for humanity before swimming away with his octopus girlfriend down to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, nope. Uh, if anything, he's become even worse than he was in the first season, as he's now gone from being a narcissistic rapist to a cold-blooded killer doing whatever Homelander says, and he even killed his own octopus girlfriend. Oh no! Oh shit! Sorry, you guys, I'm not epileptic. I'm really not sure how I feel about this new noir. Uh, he does provide a lot of, you know, the humor in the show that other aspects seem to have lost throughout the seasons. You know, there's not really as much comic relief as there is anymore, and he definitely does offer that. But on the other hand. Old Noir was just so cool, you know, he was just so imposing and so threatening and badass and this new one's sort of dumb, uh, but he did have some cool fight scenes as well. I think the whole narcolepsy thing was, you know, it was fun, it definitely was funny. Uh, was it necessary? No, but I like that they did that just because why not? <laughs> the rest of the boys, um, except for Huey, who I'll get into later. Uh, are all just sort of side characters that didn't really do much significant this season. Kimiko, you know, spoke right at the end, which is pretty cool, I guess. But she's mainly just there to be, like, the muscle for the group. Frenchie felt guilty for some murders and turned himself in. Uh, and then gets released, like, the next episode, and we never hear about it again. MM, you know, he's sort of there to give out orders, but he always seems to just crumble immediately anyway. And he did get to reconcile with his ex-wife and his daughter. Uh, but I felt like they really could have played a bigger role in this season as a whole. Uh, but again, they're not hugely important to the story. They definitely are important, but they're not as important as characters like Huey and Butcher are. <laughs> I feel like in this show, Ryan isn't really a character still. Uh, he's more of a tool, you know, used to show the struggle uh, and depth of the feud between Butcher and Homelander. He's sort of like the... Uh, it shows like who's winning based on who's got Ryan on their side more, you know, in this, in this sort of tug of war they've got going on. I feel like Ryan's main purpose is to keep Butcher acting morally, as without him this season would have gone a whole lot differently. In fact, it probably would have gone differently last season with the finale if, if it wasn't for Ryan. But I feel like in season he will have a big role to play in the show's conclusion, because it'll either be he turns to the light side and kills his dad, or the dark, but still very real possibility, especially when we're talking about this show, him and Homelander end up teaming up as sort of like an Omni-Man, even invincible sort of thing and end up taking over the world. Like you're starring in a porn version of The Matrix. Now this was a really great season for Huey. Obviously not as his character, but I think just in the way that the story developed for him. I feel like in the last two seasons, in seasons two and three, the focus really shifted away from Huey. 
even though he is really the main character of the show and like the whole reason the show exists in the first place is because of him you know his initial conflict with a character we'll later discuss leads to everything in the show taking place and thankfully Huey has become one of the most important characters again you know a lot of the situations that take place in the show happen because of Huey and time and time again Huey the pansy of the group is helping to resolve situations that end up significantly impacting the story now, who was also Huey's also in, had an incredibly charged episode you know in episodes five and six where he has to deal with the idea of letting his father either die or giving him highly dangerous compound V which may end up sent which did end up saving his life but ultimately also turns out just made things worse and uh, he had to die anyway um, which was a very very sad scene um, and in a way that whole situation sort of perfectly describes the premise of the boys IP you know you've got superpowers but at what cost of everyone else <laughs> Here he is, MVP of the season. The redemption arc that A-Train has been on is one of the best things about this show throughout its entire lifespan. And his redemption goes just to show how well written the show really is. A-Train is ultimately the reason that everything in the show starts happening. And now he could very well be the reason the show reaches a positive conclusion if he returns in season five. For someone many people label as a side character a train has had an incredible emotional journey you know with his brother and blue hawk and you know his, his struggles with identity and being a hero in the span of you know four seasons he's gone from being a self-centered vault puppet who seemed to have no regard for others and you know just cared about his image to a true hero risking his life time and time again to do what he thinks is right even when it, you know as i said it puts him in danger in many ways a train represents the whole theme of this season you know there's a lot of forgiveness and redemption themed things going on you know there are lots of characters who have done a lot of bad things within the show and before the show yeah many of them are capable of redemption and a train sort of shows that you know some of them have begun that journey like a train who's almost completed his i would imagine he probably returns in season five to fulfill his journey like other characters like Frenchie Will and maybe Kimiko as well and they'll hopefully be redeemed and fully forgiven or at least forgiven themselves by season five. Murdered in cold blood by deep state starlighters embedded in our own government. Now that we have full legal authority, a veritable army of superheroes will be called upon to rout these traitors from our government and from our streets. Right, okay. Now this may sound like recency bias, but I've been thinking, and I have to say, this may have been one of the best endings to a season since the ending of season four of Breaking Bad. Now I know season five's ending was better, and that's the best ending to any show. It's just the best any ending to anything ever. But that was, you know, the, the conclusion to a whole series, so that doesn't really count. If we're just talking season four for season four, I think the quality in these season finales are very close to one another. I mean, even for this show, that ending was dark. All the main characters are now captured by Vought, apart from Starlight and Butcher, of course, where I assume they will be kept with the surviving characters from Gen V. You know, Homelander is essentially president of the United States, and our only hope is a dying V'd up Butcher with a lethal super virus and an imaginary friend. I don't think I have ever been this excited for another season of TV to drop in my life. It's probably not gonna be for at least another year or so, uh, but I am so excited to see where the story goes. With so many loose ends, R Ryan, Butcher, Homelander, Starlight, and now a returning soldier boy, I cannot wait to see how this all comes to an end. But uh, what I do know is it's gonna be fucking graphic. All in all, I think this was the best season of the show yet. Uh, definitely up there with season one which is probably my favorite season of the show just because of how like new it was conceptually uh, there wasn't as much action as I was expecting as there have been in other shows but the character development on some of the fan favorite characters and the conflicts that were arising uh, was so exceptionally written uh, it didn't even I didn't even care too much about the lack of well I mean there was still action but not as much as in previous seasons I think the highlight of this whole season was definitely Homelander who has now reached peak instability and is one of the most terrifying characters ever. Uh, he is just so unpredictable. 
Uh, the ending has so many twists and turns. I think I had a minor heart attack at one point. And the, the death of Victorian Newman in particular had me absolutely stunned into silence for a solid five minutes. Uh, can't say uh, a little part of me didn't enjoy it though. All in all, this was probably the best season of TV to come out this decade. Uh, I haven't watched too many shows this decade, but from what I've seen, this is definitely it. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this season. And give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, stay up to date with content on the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.